Hi. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We wanted to do this because we really wanted to celebrate the kids' accomplishments this year. They really put a lot of hard work into both productions. Um, the group interpretation is a 30-minute show, and it's basically inter. So the whole show, they are interping everything. There are no props, there's no set. This is the only thing they have to use. Um, so it's very like, uh, a lot of it is just made and created through what they're doing and through what they're saying. So it's very difficult. And then the other show is the contest play, obviously, which you know that we were the state champions in contest play, which was awesome. And, the, and we'll talk a little more about that later. The, the amazing thing is, is that these two productions, the amount of work that is put into these shows in a short, such a short amount of time, these kids really put their time and effort into it, and that's everyone, from the cast to the crew to everyone involved. And we appreciate all the parents for letting us take your children until 8 o'clock at night some nights. So thank you so much, parents, for letting us do that and letting them have this experience with us. And I think that's it. You want to add anything? Oh, yes. So please turn off your cell phones. We will be recording the production so that we can put it on our cube so that everyone can watch it and we have it in our archives for the rest of our lives. So without further ado, we are going to present If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. It is a very moving piece, and they did an awesome job this past weekend and earned fifth place at state. Trouble, I guess. Tish and Bonnie had grown up together. They lived across the street. 
Bonnie's father ran a table shop. But life placed some distance between them as they got busy with their own friends. Uh, this is my boy Daniel. He lives down the street. What's up? Bonnie's friend Daniel was a big black boy who had a thing for Geneva. Kind of like Geneva had a thing for Bonnie. But Bonnie wasn't thinking about Geneva at all. Don't talk to me, boy. We ain't friends. Dang. Chill out, Geneva. You better be glad somebody wanna to talk to you with them as she needs looking like that. Ooh! Ah, no, you got ugly, big, ugly, gorilla looking boy. Okay! You <laughs> better not be having them bow legs. Well, your mama should have gave you some lotion for the ashy ankles and knees before she let you come out the house. Yeah.
I'll show it to you. Only if you like. Law enforcement. 
what you all doing in the park this way? Who well, last time I checked, this was a public park. Officer Bell? Officer Bell was one of those cops that stared at body and tits like they were nothing. Am I mistaken or do we got a problem, boy? He's not a boy, officer. Tish, you all live around here? Yes, sir, on Bank Street. Well, I'll be seeing you around. <laughs> on October 5th, between the hours of 11 and 12, Victoria Rogers, who came to the U.S. six years ago from Puerto Rico, declares that she was criminally assaulted by a man she knows to have been Alonzo Fani Hunt in the vestibule of her home. She claims to have been used by Hunt in the most extreme and abominable sexual manner and forced to undergo the most unimaginable sexual perversions. Now, where do you live? On Orchard Street. Orchard Street, if you know New York, is a very long way from Bank Street. It's not possible to run from Orchard to Bank Street. Especially not the police behind you. Officer Bell swears he saw body money from the scene of the crime. This is possible only if Officer Bell were off duty for his people on the west side, not the east side. And yet, it is now up to the accused to prove and pay for proving the improbability and irregularity of this sequence of events. As you know, this is a very difficult case. That's why my sister hired you. And you're beginning to think our confidence was misplaced? No, I wouldn't say that, no. This is just given to us, that's all. Well, I can certainly understand that. And I'm doing all that I can to get them back to you just as fast as I can. But Mrs. Rogers refused to reconsider her testimony has left us in a very tough place. And now, she has disappeared. Disappeared? But what? How did she disappear? This is a very big city. A very big country for that matter. <coughs> People disappear. Her family may have returned her to Puerto Rico. At any rate, I'm going to need special investigators in order to find her. And, and that means more money? Unfortunately. Well, how much money? Well, I'm trying to keep it as low as possible. But special yeah. investigators are special. Puerto Rico. We don't know for sure. But it is a strong possibility. Anyways, she disappeared a few yeah. days ago from our apartment on Orchard Street. But doesn't that make you look bad for her case? To just up and disappear like that? She's the key witness. Yes, but she is the strong. <coughs> Suffering from the after effects of rape. So her behavior is incomprehensible. She is only one of the key witnesses in the case. You have to remember this Officer Bell is the authoritative identification of the rapist. He swears he saw Fani at the scene of the crime. And I'm certain it is his testimony that she continuously repeats. If she saw Fani at the scene of the crime, then why did they have to wait to come and get him out the house? Wait, so let me get this straight. You mean Officer Bell tells her what to say? Exactly. So there's no evidence of the truth in this case. If I didn't believe in Alonzo's innocence, I never would have taken the case. Call him fun. If you call him Alonzo, I see the judge in the bars and the chains. If you're going to do this, you've got to be family. So please, call him fun. I understand. I know this won't be easy. You should know that your testimony counts for nothing. Why is that? Because you're together. For Hayward, the battle we can't be private what the law can neither grant to, nor a public honor. And for Fani, Tish is what kept him gone.
Well, what about your folks? Not yet. I wanted to tell you first. Okay, well, what about Mrs. Rogers? Have they found me yet? Tish, you see my big-headed boy today? 
Don't you worry. There aren't enough powers in the day, or judges on the bench to try all the cases brought against these men. The game has been rigged and the courts see it through. Alonzo Jr. was born with his father in prison for a crime he did not commit. So like many of these poor men, find him to complete. Tish was once 19. Fani was once 22. We were always trying to make Hayward Ensemble. Kavanya Moore, Tish Hurst. 